Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm back with Lori Baker. Hey, Lori. Hey. Um, and we are here today to talk about designing with a specific set of acrylic templates called Hearts and More, uh, designed by Sue Pellant. Right. Um, and um, they're a little interesting looking. They are. They may not be intuitive. That's right. The and first thing we did was read the directions carefully. <laughs> but they're, um, they um, are very flexible. Yes. And they offer a lot of possibilities, and so that's Correct. why we wanted to talk about them and use them. Um, this is based on um, a quilt maker's workshop that we have in our October, November That's 2015 right. issue. Yes. Um, and we're going to be kind of giving the same tutorial here. Yes. Okay, great. Tell me about the quilt that we've got on the table. I love the quilt we, we designed. Actually, we designed is a very uh, not accurate term. Uh, Susan Geddes, our art director, mm -hmm. and Kath Wanger Wright, our senior designer, mm -hmm. designed this quilt um, using the possibilities from the templates. Um, I, I love this thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's really wonderful. Um, if you look at it, we've got a flower with two layers, and then the center also has two layers. And then they just sprinkled the little circles around. We did uh, design the little quilting over here, the little yeah. flower tendril, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. also using the templates. So they're really versatile. Well, and this quilt is called Raspberry Fizz. Yes. So it's just adorable. And it was made using a layer cake, right? Yes, ten, that's right. Cut 10 inch squares. That's also correct. Pieced back. Yes. So. Well, let's talk about how to use these because we've got a few shapes to get through because there's so much. There are so many on. possibilities. Mm -hmm. So there are four different sizes of templates. And as it happened, what I'm going to show you that we used on the quilt is all from one size. Maybe because we were working with a, a layer cake? Yes, I think so. get the most out of it? Yep, I think that's right. And we like to design with paper because it's cheap. Yeah. Um, it's, I have colored paper because that's what we had available at the office. But if you were designing this at home, you could use just white copier paper. Mm -hmm. um, so I cut my paper in squares, even though the the pre-cut squares of fabric are 10 inch, so I can't cut that from a piece of regular copy right. paper. It's only eight and a half inches wide. So my, my papers are eight and a half inches wide, but that, that was able to... Still I was, maximize a lot of the fabric. Yes, yeah. I was able to use most everything I needed to do. Especially when you consider a layer cake, it, you're, you're talking from pinked edge to, edge to pinked right, edge. Right. So there's a little bit of waste anyway. Yes. Very so good. So eight and a half inches square. Um, most of the time, I fold it in half in order to get a balanced whatever it is I'm making, heart, circle, whatever. You only have to draw it once. Exactly. One of the things that's important with these templates, because they have such extreme curves, is that you want a smaller blade on the rotary cutter. So I'm using a 28 millimeter rotary cutter. So the first thing I'm going to cut is uh, just a regular heart. Okay. And I have to think a minute about how to lay it. That looks right. This is right. So I want the whole circle on the paper, but I want this it just the, touching sorry, the this, edge. Is this the four inch? This okay. is the four inch circle. Okay, okay. And then I've got the W down here just because that, again, maximized the fabric that I had to use. One of the things that is really noticeable here in our studio is that we've only got one side of the cutting mat to work with. Mm -hmm. At home, most of the time, most of us have two sides at least that we can get to. So we have to pay attention because we've only got one side. We're going to be cutting and moving around and we wanna make sure we don't ever cut toward ourselves. So I need to move or I need a rotary, a rotating mat. Right, or one that you can turn yeah. on your tabletop yeah, surface. Yeah, a smaller one mm -hmm. that I could move. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm going to move myself 
when I'm cutting this little circle, I don't ever want to lift my blade. Okay, and now here I need to stop because I'm getting right up there toward, I'm going toward my fingers. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move my fingers and I'm going to keep cutting. And here I need to rotate the mat. Yeah. This is another reason I really like to do the, the paper thing is that I can practice and figure out how it works best. Yeah. Um, before you're cutting into before your Before I'm cutting fabric. my fabric. But there is our basic heart shape. Excellent. Now, again, these, these templates are so versatile. There's a, another side on this template that's curved. So I get a whole different shape of my heart if I use this curved mm. side rather than the straight side. And on this little tight curve, I really notice uh, how much I appreciate the 28 degree or 28 millimeter rotary cutter. Now, see, ideally, I wouldn't want to move my right. paper, but I did just because. Again, because we're bound by the constraints of our studio exactly. right now. But look at what a different shape we get. And oh yeah, that's pretty. And you can change. Make this longer, shorter, you know, just experiment. Yeah, and, or, and as you said, you re read the directions so you know what these markings along the outside mean right. and how best to use them. And right. You know what you're doing. Okay, so I want to cut a circle now. And I'm going to cut the four inch circle, and I just need to be aware of markings on the rule. So we've got a 90 degree line, mm -hmm. and we've also got the zero degree line. Mm -hmm. So I want to line the 90 degree line up with the folded edge of my paper and just cut around that edge. And again, because we're dealing with the fold, when we finish up, we've got two matching halves. Mm -hmm. I know that I didn't quite get that cut through, so I'm just going to tear that. But there we Voila. get a circle, just like that. If we want something other than a circle, we can use that same template. And instead of lining up the 90 degree, we can slide it out here so we've got the 60 degree mark mm -hmm. on the fold and cut again. And this time we're going to have a leaf shape. Mm -hmm. Very easy. Very easy. I do want to mention that the smaller circles are trickier to cut. So if you're going to use smaller circles, you want to practice a few times. Yeah. And I guess if you really wanted to, you could trace around the shapes with a pencil and then cut them out with scissors. Yes, you could. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's an extra step, but it, right. it might just work better for you. It might. The last one I think was the most fun to cut because it's a little, a, 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 an interesting shape, something very different. So we're going to cut a six petal flower. Okay. So I fold my paper in half mm -hmm. and then I want to mark the center. And I know that my paper is eight and a half inches, so I need to mark it four and a quarter. Then on my cutting mat, I need this 60 degree line. Let's move this over for you. And I'm going to line the center of my fabric up with the zero mark on that 60 degree line that goes across here. Okay. And I'm going to fold up to the 60 degree line. Okay. 
And now I'm going to turn my paper over mm -hmm. and I'm going to line that, that point up with the zero mm -hmm. and my straight edge up with the straight Good. edge. And I'm going to fold to the 60 degree mark again. And now I'm simply going to take my template. This is when I want to pay attention to that line that I pointed out earlier that's mm -hmm. showing us the vertical center. Mm -hmm. And I want that vertical point down here. And then I'm going to watch both sides so I get it centered. So I've got the point of the, the vertical at the point here and 60 degrees here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on all, layers, all of the paper. layers of the paper have a little bit that I'm going to cut off. And you're cutting through a number of layers. And I'm here, cutting so. through a bunch of layers, so I need to press a little harder than usual. I didn't quite get through right there. Well, again, you're working at an unnatural angle here. Yes, so exactly. We won't hold it against you. Good, good, good. And there's my little flower. Cute. Isn't that fun? Yeah. So then once we had a number of shapes cut mm -hmm. to play with, we just started working and designing and playing with the shapes. We knew we wanted a flower, so we had the hearts for that bottom layer of petals on our flower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if you remember, they were all made up of different fabrics. That's there correct. There were different fabrics going on in there. And, and our, our little hearts kind of overlap a little bit, so, you know, we played with that. We added our six-petal flower in the middle, mm -hmm. and then we added another larger circle for the center, and didn't like that. That's a little too big, so let's try a smaller circle. Yeah, that's better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have a whole handful of the little circles then that we just kind of sprinkled around and uh, played and you, with other sizes. And you cut leaf shapes we to experiment did. with them and you decided not to use them in the quilt. We did. Which... We had a couple of them. Uh, we had these hearts and, and that didn't excite us working. at all. The, the different leaf shapes, well, well, they were okay, but they just weren't working for they, this design. But for again, this one. you'd cut them out of paper, so... No biggie. No biggie. Exactly. And it gives you that, that play, playing and experimenting. Right. So once we have all of this and we've got our design like we want it, we start working with the fabric. We put a fusible web on the back of the fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, we used Misty Fuse. It's a real drapeable fusible. Mm -hmm. it, it worked very well. And then cut the shapes out of the real fabric and you're ready to go to town. Yes, indeed. And we have this, in addition to it being in our... Um, October, November 2015 issue, we are also offering this as a kit. That's right. That includes? This fabric, this particular fabric from Moda, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The Misty Fuse and the templates. The full set of templates. Correct. Which again, the, you only used one of the four mm -hmm. to make this quilt. Think of how many other design possibilities oh, you have. Yes. Different sizes. Yes. Um, for many more things. And again, that, that kit is super cute. You didn't even use all of the fabric no, that came in the layer cake. I did not. So you could expand it, make it bigger, yes. make it into a crib quilt, beautiful wall hanging. Whatever. And it's just, it's adorable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for showing us how to use these, these, um, these rulers. Again, when you look at them in the store, you see them online, you think, yeah. Okay. Why do how I do want I, those? Well, how, how will they work? How do I do it? Yeah. So this is a great demonstration. Thanks so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.